Shalom, shalom to those far and near. Shalom, shalom to all who hear. Shalom, 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 shalom. I'm Bonnie Moore, and God has good news for you, and we're going to share it today right from His. Wonderful, magnificent word. Everyone say, wow, because his words are life to those who find them and help to all their flesh. So let's open our hearts, open the ears of our hearts, the eyes of our hearts, because we have to see in the spirit to see the things of God. And, you know, he's put eternity in each person's heart. That's Ecclesiastes um, 3.11. And so you must see eternity with your heart. See beyond physical to the hope to which he's calling you. So open my ears that I may hear. Open my eyes that I may see. Open my heart, O oh Lord, to hear your voice. Speak, Lord, I'm listening. Your servant I will be. To do your will is mine. Delight, speak, Lord, I'm listening, your servant I will be. For to do your will, O oh Lord, is my delight. And his will is delightful. It's good, pleasing, and perfect. I'm going to share a screen now so that we can continue our series on Because You Know My Name. And today, that's from Psalm 91. He lifts you on high and protects you from the enemy because you know his name. What name? The name you need at the moment because we've already covered nine of his wonderful covenant names that contain his covenant promises. Yahweh, the Lord who is, who was, and who is to come. Three tenses of the verb to be in Hebrew. Uh, so it's Hayahoveh Yiye. And then Elohim, the God who created us. It represents the twin, Trinity, Father, Son, and we saw that all in the Hebrew letters and Holy Spirit. The Lord, our righteousness, Yahweh said, can you? He is our righteousness. Jesus took all our sins and gave us the righteousness of God. So we start with righteousness, and on that, we build the sanctification he does for us. And on that comes redemption, the forgiveness of our sins. And the Lord, well, we get that right away with the gift of righteousness. And the Lord, your helper. Uh, Yahweh is three, and the Lord who sees ahead and provides, uh, Yahweh Yire. And the, well, we did the Lord. Oh, it was the Lord, your heal, healer. I was saying the Lord, my helper. The Lord, your healer, Yahweh Rofeka, you know, the one who heals you. And he does. He's, he came to undo the works of the devil. And the devil, that's the work, the curse, but he redeemed us from the curse. Of, Sickness, poverty, and eternal death. And we did the helper El Shaddai. He's more than enough. And the Lord of hosts, the angelic armies. And the Lord is peace, shalom. His plans for us are shalom, the whole pie, not evil. And a future and a hope. And today we're looking at this most wonderful name, the Good Shepherd. Um, the Lord is my shepherd. This is another one of those great names that arise out of the covenant name, Lord. 
Yahweh, a magnificent promise signed in his name that makes you a partaker of the divine nature, even feeds us his own body and blood. In Jesus are all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge, and he is your great good shepherd. So this is lesson number 10. The Lord is my shepherd. Reading from right to left, Yahweh Roi. So sometimes you see uh, within H for the hey, but in Roi, my shepherd, it doesn't have the hey, but it does. If you replace the yod with the hey, it just means shepherd, the shepherd. But this is my, E, my shepherd. And of course, it's from Psalm 23. We hear that beautiful name used. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And we know that when, I mean, most people, if they don't know any other psalm, if they know a psalm, they know Psalm 23. And there's a reason for that. I'm sure that the Lord wants us to know because he's our good shepherd forever, not just now in this life. And we'll see that from the book of Revelation. I am the good shepherd, he said. He made sure you know everything good comes from God. If it's not good, it's not from God. You can uh, rebuke it and you can tell Satan to get to be gone. And then you can worship and get that out, such as the spirit of fear, the spirit of depression, those are unclean influences from the pit of hell. And also any kinds of symptoms, illness, heart disease, whatever it is, that's not from God. So he laid down his life that we wouldn't have those. Now, there are many ways to which God likens his relationship with us, but there's four principal ways. And aren't they wonderful? A parent with his child, we're the child, he's the father. A vine with its branches, he's the vine, we're the branches. We draw his divine life like the sap out of the vine into the branches to produce the fruit of the spirit and wonderful, amazing inventions, good works in our life. A bridegroom with his bride. That's the marriage covenant where he's our protector, our deliverer, our provider. And a shepherd with his sheep. What does the shepherd do with his sheep? He guides them. He takes them to good pasture lands. He lets them relax. He protects them from the wolves and the uh, enemies. He is there for them night and day. And it is upon the foundation of these that his names build up benefits. Forgiveness, healing, provision, protection, deliverance, salvation, righteousness, sanctification, redemption, direction, and eternal life. So the Lord is my shepherd. And as we're saying, shepherd cares for the sheep. He gives his life for the sheep because he's not a hired hand. We're his sheep. We are the sheep of his pasture. God's own special flock. You know, so he takes, uh, he protects us. He takes care of us. You have a shepherd. And here's from my short movie, uh, Yehuda, the son born in praise. And this is um, one best short film 2016 at the International Christian Film Festival. But we had a little lamb, Lola, carried in the arms of the good shepherd. That's what it says in Isaiah. He carries the lambs in his bosom. Now, Jesus said the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. But he came that we have life and have it abundantly. So he's our good shepherd. And the good shepherd lays down his life for a sheep. He gives us abundant life. That's not just getting by. That's thriving. That's getting healed, blessed, protected, prospering. Because, you know, he in Jesus, he rescued us from the domain of darkness. That's the devil's hopeless, unhappy existence. And transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of our sins by his blood. Jesus did that for us. And the Son of Man has come to seek out and save that which was lost. He's always looking for the lost sheep. And all of us, it says in Isaiah, the prophecy, all of us like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned his own way. But the Lord has caused the iniquity of us all to fall on him, to fall on Jesus. And you see the Aleph Tav is there in the Hebrew. He's the Alpha to the Omega, the Aleph to the Tav, signifying signature of Jesus. Now, surely our illnesses and griefs he bore, our pains and our sorrows he carried. Those are no longer yours. He took them. So if they show up, you tell the devil, no, those are not mine. They must go. None of that. And out of here, spirit of infirmity, you're, you're not to remain in my body. And then you can worship the Lord. Yet we ourselves esteemed him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. But he was pierced through for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The chastening for our well-being fell upon him. And by his scourging, we are healed. And that's from Isaiah 53, 4 through 5. 
So the Lord was always planning this good shepherd who would lay down his life for the sheep. And it was Jesus who always was our good shepherd. Even under the Old Testament, talking in Micah from everlasting, he would rise up and shepherd his flock, the Prince of Peace. And he came on a rescue mission when he became flesh and dwelt among us. For thus says, this is from Ezekiel, the prophet as Ezekiel was saying, the Lord, I said, I myself will shepherd my sheep. But if you read it in Hebrew, he uses the word Lord with the small letters, Adonai. And then they put God as the next word, but actually in the Hebrew, it's Yahweh. It's Yudhigave. And so what he's saying is Jesus, because Adonai is God in that. And he's saying, and Yahweh, you're going to search for the sheep and seek them out. You know, the Father and he are one. They're shepherding us together. Jesus said, you're in my hand when I'm your shepherd. And incidentally, you're also in the Father's hand when you're in my hand. And there's no snatching out of his hand. So he cares for the flock. He said, I myself will search for my sheep and seek them out. As a shepherd cares for his flock in the day when he is among his scattered sheep. So I will care for my sheep and will deliver them from all the places to which they were scattered on a cloudy and gloomy day. Ezekiel 34, 11 through 12. And in that same uh, chapter, he says he'll lead you to his holy mountain and rain down showers of blessing. Jesus has opened the uh, gate, the door. He's the door of heaven. It's open now. And a pouring down, healing, blessings, the answers to every one of your prayers. It's all there. You don't have to beg for it. It's falling on you. But if you don't open the door of your heart, it's piling up at your door. Like if you got FedEx deliveries, but you never opened your door. And Jesus, he knocks at the door of your heart. If you open, he comes in, dines with you. But you know, if you have unforgiveness, if you have a bitter root, your door is shut to him like a bronze door with iron bars. Check inside if you're not, ask Lord the hindrance if you're not receiving. So the father was in Jesus reconciling the world to himself. He didn't count our sins against us because he put them on him. So he came to rescue us and set the captives free and destroy the sting and power of death. So he appeared to undo, to destroy the works of the devil. Now the word translated sh shepherd in Hebrew language is it was uh, originally written, just the word shepherd is ra'ah. And it also means to feed, to pasture, to graze. And it's translated sometimes just as feed. The shepherd feeds the flock, but it also is the word for shepherd. So you see that the shepherd is to feed the flock, not to beat the flock, but to feed the flock. Now, the first one to call God his shepherd was Jacob, because Jacob was a shepherd for Laban. Remember, he knew what it was to be out there in the heat and the cold and chase the wolves and the lions and the bears and take care of the sheep. It was a very tedious, I mean, very heavy work. But when he was about to pass away and was, you know, to, to God and was talking to his son, uh, Joseph, he said, the God before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac walked, the God who has been my shepherd all my life to this day, the angel, the heavenly messenger who has redeemed me from all evil. That's, that sure sounds like Jesus, doesn't it? The messenger of God who feeds us and uh, redeems us from evil. Now, the next one, of course, was David. And he wrote the famous psalm, the Lord is my shepherd. And he was a shepherd too. Uh, the father, you know, God took him from shepherding the sheep of his father, Jesse, to shepherding his people, Israel. And he wrote the beautiful 23rd Psalm. We'll look at that in a moment. Now, the prophets later uh, referred to the Lord as a shepherd. Isaiah did, and Ezekiel, and that one we just read, did. And he was telling how he wants leaders who are shepherds for his people. And that was what was in his heart, but it was also in the heart of Jesus. Because remember when he disembarked from the boat there and uh, went ashore, he saw a huge crowd, large crowd, and he felt compassion for them because they like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. You see, he tells us how to have the abundant life. His word is life, eternal life, spirit and life. Now, sheep without a shepherd are lost sheep. <laughs> and you see many today. And they wander and are easy prey. Some of us will too. But the good shepherd found us and he's brought us home and to his pasture. 
and he's prospered us and blessed us and healed us. We should be so grateful. We should be looking for that shepherd. And once we find him, he'll never let us go. He doesn't reject anyone who comes to him, but raises them up on the last day. And the father seals you in Jesus when you believe in him and you're in his hand. Now, and he'll go after you if you get lost, just like the parable of the lost sheep. Now, Jesus told us for sure, he's the good shepherd the father was speaking of, and he'd lay down his life for his sheep. Jesus refers to him in Isaiah 53 as the arm, who to, who to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed. So he's father reaching down to our humanity to embrace us and carry us in his bosom like the lambs. Jesus, it says, is from the bosom of the father. It's his word that generates deep in his heart, deep in him, and the Holy Spirit speaks it forth. And he's saying he's, he draws us back into the place where he goes right into the Father's prison, where it's the secret place of the Most High. So he, he when uh, God raised Jesus from the dead, he said, now the God of peace, remember we studied that last week, Shalom, who brought up from the dead, the, and that's not there by mistake, he's the God who reconciles, who brings us into peace with him through Jesus, who brought up the dead uh, from the dead, you know, he, really, he raised Jesus from the dead by the Holy Spirit. The great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the eternal covenant has shed for us for seal with Jesus our Lord. Equip you. You see, your shepherd equips you. He uh, teaches you to profit and instructs you in the way to go. He guides you. And every good thing to do his will. Working in us that which is pleasing in his sight. Well, love is pleasing. He's working in us the perfect love. Through Jesus Christ, to whom the glory be the glory forever and ever. Glorious God's goodness, his power, and his presence with us. And that's the good shepherd. Now, I was saying in the book of Micah, he says, you know, when he talks about the Savior will be born in Bethlehem, that he will rise up and shepherd his flock. And he's going to be our peace. So we see Shalom and Roe often are put together because he leads us to waters of peace, right? Of healing and of peace. Now, this isn't just for this time while we're in the flesh. It's forever. It's a forever assignment to Jesus, our Prince of Peace, to be our great good shepherd and our great high priest. That's what he is to us now. He's interceding for us, praying for us, being the high priest of our agreement with him, homologio, confession, so God can perform our words if we agree with him for healing, for prosperity, and then for salvation. And then we see his, he, he laid down his life, but he was raised as our good shepherd, our great high priest. And you find him in the heavenly kingdom, if you read Revelation 7, and you will hunger no longer, nor thirst anymore, nor will the sun beat down on you, nor any heat, for the lamb, the lamb of sacrifice, the Passover, in the center of the throne will be your shepherd and will guide you to springs of the water of life. And I will wipe every tear from your eyes. What a beautiful promise from God. And you know, his word is true. He never lies. Now, David knew the Lord as his shepherd and described that relationship in Psalm 23. And if you note Psalm 22, it's all about the passion of Jesus, how he hung on the cross, how he went to the dust of death, how he died for us. He was pierced through for, uh, you know, and uh, his hands and feet. That's a beautiful Psalm of David seeing Jesus on the cross. And then the very next one, it's not a mistake because he was raised from the dead as the great shepherd of the sheep. So that's why Psalm 22 and 23 follow in that order. And the Psalm 23, let's just say it. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He's the provider. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He said, come to me, all you're weary and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. He leads me beside quiet waters, healing waters, waters of life. As the Holy Spirit, he restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He'll take you on the right path, the way you should go. You know, rely on him, lean on him, and he'll show you the path. Even though I walk through the dark valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. We don't have the spirit of fear. We have power, love, and a sound mind. For you are with me. That, God said, what did he say? Jesus said when he went to heaven, You're, I'm with you always even to the end of the age. I think the end is pretty soon. We see all the signs of the times, yeah? He's coming back, he's coming back. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. He's the God of all comfort, Father of tender mercies. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. 
the devil can try to take all your stuff. You're not going to let him do it anymore. You have anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. That's the abundant life. Surely goodness and loving kindness pursue me. All these blessings will overtake you and overwhelm you. That's Deuteronomy 28. When you obey, hear and obey his voice. What does he tell you? Walk in love. Forgive. It's, it's the most wondrous green thing. Pursue, pursue me all the days of my life. And I dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A rekyamim for length of days. That's forever. And we see that in Jesus. He leads us. He guides us. He takes us out of dark valleys. And where's your good shepherd taking you? To dwell in the house of the Lord, your father forever, where there's delights at his right hand. And let's look at the name in Hebrew. Yahweh Roi. And we're looking at the Hebrew alphabet here. So beautiful. And the letter Resh is the first. And it means head. It's the 20th letter. The number uh, number's 200. And it alludes to uh, Rosh, head. And the pictogram is the head. Now, what do we know about Jesus? He's the head of the church, and the shepherd is the head of the flock. And it is one of the most significant parts of your body because your head directs what goes on with the rest of your body. Yeah? And it can mean also the beginning of something, the beginning of the year, Rosh Hashanah. You know, but it's, um, so we see the shepherd. He's, he's leading us, guiding us. He's, he's the director. He's the head. And we follow as his sheep so as his partners too as in fellowship we're connected to a dynamo <laughs> generating the power of god in our lives so that we have through that power can heal and, and lay our hands on the sick things like that now the next letter from the right to the left is ayin and that's the 16th letter is number is abendi and its pictogram is the eyes originally it was just one eye but then in the scrolls it became this letter ayin you see the two eyes and the nerves then connecting at the cranial nerve so you always to keep the word before between your eyes. So you can see that in the ayin. And uh, it is a crown letter. And it tells you that God has his eyes on you. The good shepherd, what's he's doing? He's the head of the flock, but he's watching you with loving eyes. He's loving eyes. He's, uh, he directs you with his eye. He looks after you, but he's always watching, looking ahead to provide, looking ahead to stop the evil. That's it. He's got his eyes on you. And the next letter is yod, which means hand. If you talk about your yod, it's your hand. And that has the number 10, which is the tithe, which is the word of God, but also completeness. You know, 10 commandments, it's a, it's a whole. That's why the tithe is 10, because 10 is, it represents the all of your income. Now, there's no snatching out of his hand. So there, we got the hand there again. So the shepherd has his eyes on us, and we're in his hand, and he's the head directing things, so you don't need to worry. He's got it in hand. And if you take off the yod for the my, and just make it the shepherd, it's a hey, which is the letter of grace, and it's number five. And so when you add it up, uh, actually, my shepherd adds up to the number 10. If you add the 200 and the 70 and the 10, it adds up to 10. Um, and so when there you have, uh, you know, it's reduced, and you can reduce that further to one. And then if you take off the my, and just use shepherd, uh, well, also one is the number of God, then you take off the mic. When you add it all up, it comes 14, you add it one, one more, you get five. It's the number of grace. So grace to them says through Jesus Christ. Isn't this amazing? The way that God plans uh, even the letters to tell us so much information about our good shepherd and about who he is, that he's the head directing us, he's the eyes on us, you know, it's beautiful. So let us say um, our prayer of salvation. Heavenly Father, thank you for Jesus. He died for me. I believe you raised him from the dead. I confess that Jesus is Lord. Jesus is my Lord. Please fill me with your Holy Spirit and lead me in that beautiful life you prepared for me in advance that I might enjoy it. Amen. Isn't that um, a beautiful prayer because we're letting our good shepherd into our hearts so that we can enjoy all the benefits of the kingdom and he says little flock little flock it has pleased the father to give you his kingdom for his own special treasure you are little flock little flock that has pleased the father to give you his riches for his own special treasure you are now, I'm trying to do the Shaddai sign, 
and then they would put it as a triangle. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and give you his grace. The Lord smile upon you and give you shalom, 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 shalom. Uh, shalom, everyone. And remember, the Lord is your shepherd. There's nothing you want. He's got your healing. He's got your covered. He comes behind you. He's with you. And he goes before you. Shalom, everyone. This is really only the beginning. I make all things new. Resurrection joy is there for all of you. I have promised you eternal life, and it is there for you in Jesus. You have only to receive him. Amen.